Hey, we love to spice things up and get it wild here on set. So we're going to send it over to Lou. Lou, did you just lay an egg? Uh, sorry, I told you I wasn't feeling quite right, but yeah, we just laid an egg here. But again, we are here uh, with Ron from the Academy of Wildlife Education, and he does have egg in hand, and uh, it's herp talk here today, herpetological <laughs> talk, as uh, we're going to teach you some things about reptiles. About reptiles and stuff, and, and again, we're going to make some omelets today. This is... Oh, what uh, is this now? This was just laid here within the past few hours. This is actually... Uh, black rat snake egg and we we're going to talk about how animals you know change and morph and stuff and again there's you know some people who think that uh, uh, reptiles and birds are all evolved along the same areas and stuff and so reptiles and birds both start as that eggs awesome. so yeah I mean you can feel it and again it doesn't feel like a traditional egg it's kind of rough it's it's leathery you can see this Craig it's, it's, it's very, it's got a rough texture to it, almost like a stucco ceiling, okay, is what it looks like here. It is a little pliable, I'm, 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 right. I'm not squeezing too hard, a little bit, a little pliable. Right. And can't hear anything. No, uh, in there yet. yeah, I was going to say this okay. is just uh, laid here probably this morning and that stuff. That is awesome. But this is how the snakes start. And uh, again, this is uh, what she would do is she would clear out uh, a place uh, in some uh, dry leaves or bury it a little bit in the ground and stuff. And then this would be incubated by the earth. And so whatever the temperature of the day is and uh, will also help determine what sex that uh, oh, reptile really? would be. Well, if it's yeah. hotter, if it's it hotter, what? colder, males versus females, stuff like so that. So if, if it's a hotter cook time, I believe they're females when they're warmer and they're when males they're, when they're, they're not. cooler, okay. right, and stuff like that. And so when that snake is in there and it develops, it actually has an egg tooth like a chicken does, and it will slit the side of uh, the egg when it's time to hatch, and then it will crawl out. And when it crawls out, it looks like I'll switch with you. Let me take this one. So this is a little rat snake then? This is a black rat snake, and if you look at it, it doesn't look black no, at all. No, it doesn't. Uh, because if it was a black pencil, basically, it would just stick out like a sore thumb in the ecosystem and be very easy for other birds and animals to find it and stuff. So when they're first hatched, they have to blend into their environment. And they have a very cool pattern, very beautiful looking pattern as far as snakes go. And uh, we've had this one uh, for about uh, six months or so. And it's already doubled in size from when we got really? it. Really? So about they're that big when you got them? really tiny when they're first hatched out. It's amazing uh, that those uh, snakes could So what does some, somebody like this eat? Uh, something like this is going to eat uh, insects and stuff. Little uh, crickets and stuff. Crickets and worms. Mealworms and stuff. And it's going to look for uh, baby mice. That's oh, what it's really? going to look for right now. Uh, because, again, the baby mice aren't going to pit up a, a fight and they don't have to really constrict them. Uh, black rat snakes are one of Iowa's largest uh, snakes. And they're a constrictor. And so they're the ones that would sit and ambush their prey, uh, squeeze it, and then uh, consume it. But obviously at this age, they're not going to kill too many mice. And actually the mice and the rats could eat them okay. at this age. And so it takes them a while to uh, grow up. And right now it's got a really good handle on my fingers. So That's very slick. Not going to go anywhere. And they use their bodies to anchor themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, this snake is commonly found up in trees. And so they can actually support their body like by that. just hanging out, right, and looking like a tree branch and stuff. And they'll eat birds and get into uh, the nest and eat eggs and stuff like that. Um, but again, not at this size, though. We're talking no, because again, if full grown. this guy's going to spend his time on the ground. How long right before now? he would be big enough to, to start going after prey? It's going to take years. Years? Right. Seriously. Right, because again, the reptiles, uh, they're not very fast growers, and so they, uh, it takes quite a while for them to grow up to reach adult size. And then we'll show you what the adult snake looks like. Little snake Winnebago there. Absolutely. Okay. And this one here isn't full grown yet. This is the mother that just laid the the eggs. We'll get her out. Was it just a single egg then? No, she had a couple in there. Really? Right. They'll was it in collect. the bag? Yeah, it was in the bag. So. Wow. 
So this is a juvenile uh, black rat snake. You can still see a little bit of the color pattern on her body and stuff. But not starting to turn the black that you started mentioned. Starting to turn jet black. You can see that she's getting some size to her. Uh, as an adult, she's going, uh, the adult uh, black rat snakes are going to get about six feet. And so, and, and these are common around here. So right. people see these on the side of the road because this is about the time when things are just starting to warm up. They might find mm, asphalt right. is very appealing. In the morning is when you're going to find most of your reptiles basking and warming up. And yeah, asphalt's huge as far as uh, uh, holding and retaining heat. And so we tend to find these animals out on asphalt, uh, stretched across the road sometimes just to get their bodies warmed up. Mm. Uh, we would prefer that they find a, a rock or something that the sun is you know, warmed up for them. But that's the world we live in right now. Uh, we definitely want to have these snakes around big time rodent control. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just definitely want to have uh, a good population of uh, snakes around. Uh, people are afraid of them. Uh, of course, we know that. because uh, they get big. Well, and again, they'll think that they're getting chased by the snake and everything else. And uh, Now, how know. big is this guy here? I'd say she's probably maybe three and a half, four feet. And you say it's not uncommon for them to get how big? Six feet. Six feet long. Right, okay. and they'll be jet black. I mean, they're just a gorgeous snake. Uh, constrictor, like I said, so uh, they suffocate their prey uh, when they get older. And uh, a tree dweller, so you'll find them climbing up in trees and mm -hmm. stuff. So it's one of those things that you could be walking in the woods and yeah, snakes, you know, when they fall asleep, can fall out of the trees and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it does happen from time to time. Yeah, they go partying all <laughs> night. They don't, don't realize what time it is in the morning. That's and right. they just doze off and slip off the branch. Slip off a branch, yep. it can happen okay. and stuff. But uh, uh, it's that time of year to where obviously animals are starting to uh, reproduce, animals are laying eggs and the reptiles are definitely in that class. Now what are you going to do with the egg that this snake laid? Well uh, we can try to incubate it and stuff and basically there's a thing called vermiculite that we can put it in sure. and uh, try to hatch it out. Uh, you know, I want to show something here. Uh, Craig, look what the snake did here. He's trying to <laughs> hang on or hang she's under. trying to hang on to the and there's a little loop on your belt and he and she put her tail through the loop to hang on better right that is amazing so again that's like if it was up in a tree and yeah. something it would just find that something to unreal. anchor itself nobody likes to fall out of trees right and so snakes are the same way or uh, we dropped on live tv yeah right absolutely okay. hey yeah. anything for the ratings we want to help <laughs> you guys out that is uh, slick so you know they are aware of their environment again this is a perfect example of an animal that's been imprinted it knows what we're doing when we're handling it uh, a lot of people would be afraid and they would hold the snake by the back of the head and then the snake would gape and and stuff and in the wild, whenever something pins a snake's head down, usually it means that the snake's about to be eaten. Mm -hmm. Birds will do that. They'll pin the snake down and then peck at the back of the head and kill it. And so when we teach people to work with snakes, we always say, hold their body, give their head free range, and everybody's afraid that, oh, you're going to get bit. Mm -hmm. Well, no, the animal is calm and at ease, and that's part of uh, interacting. Now, we also with noticed them. that this gal is shedding a little bit. Sure, and uh, again, uh, that's how they grow. Uh, it's all based on diet if they're eating uh, a lot, then they'll shed a lot. And so you must be feeding them okay. She's okay. Fed, and actually this snake is out, is, uh, is held out at uh, Lake Red Rock at oh, the really? uh, Corps of Engineers uh, at their display. And we have one of our uh, other snakes, a uh, fox snake that's on display out there as well. But we work with the different government entities and stuff and uh, you know, we swap critters from time to time and tell stories and we'll be going out to Red because Rock. Because they like to the travel like anybody else. You know, you know it's what? vacation time. And that's how they get their bonus miles. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and you know, and so and then the tongue sticks out and everybody's afraid of the tongue. and. That's how they can tell what's in their environment. They've got a Jacobson organ that uh, the information goes and sticks in and they can tell what's in their environment. That's how they that's smell. That's how they smell. That's how they smell. Yeah, they don't taste with their tongue. That's how they smell. And uh, they have heat sensors in their face and uh, that's how they attract Now, is brain. this uh, snake over at the academy now? Um, or are you still sticking We're going to wait for our black rat snake to grow up okay. and stuff. So, uh, you know, we borrow uh, animals from time to time okay. from different facilities when we want to tell 
tell a particular story and uh, you know this is just one of those situations. Well that's awesome though. they have this kind of ability to do so. Now mm -hmm. what other animals do you guys have out there because somebody over the weekend want to know uh, what they could expect because they were staying at a hotel right down the street from you guys. Sure. And they were in from out of town. This would be a perfect spot for people that are in from out of town for a little road trip as to something to do in Des Moines is come on over to your place. Right. The Academy of Wildlife Education is over at Merle Hay Mall. Uh, you know a lot of people think it's just a big taxidermy display and it's mm -hmm. not. This is where we actually have live animals. Uh, Bears, wolves, cougars, very important right now. They're native to Iowa. They're in our state now, and you'll learn a lot about those species that uh, are in your backyard or on your back 40. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're the place to uh, get your questions answered and calm the people down. There you go. And uh, we can coexist with wildlife here in the city, especially. Uh, we've got Gray's Lake, and uh, over by Waterworks Park is some awesome places to find animals. Uh, there's been river otters over there and beaver and snakes and bats and coyotes and foxes. You got eagles uh, having uh, eaglets down there now. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a good place uh, to live. And then when you go out to the other Sailorville Lake, and uh, there's just a lot of cool places to go if you like wildlife. So might as well learn about them if you're going to go out and spot them. And, and again, if you do have people from out of town, you're looking for something to do in Des Moines, this would be one of the places to go. We're the place to go. We've got programs every day. Uh, we're going to start something new called Breakfast with the Bears. You're not going to sit in with the bears. But again, when they're eating breakfast, we're going to try to you work gotta out. You got to bring them a picnic basket. <laughs> Absolutely, we're going to change the name of one of them to Yogi there you and go. Uh, <laughs> see uh, if we can get uh, some more people to come out and enjoy the mornings with us. As far as having breakfast with the black bears, so there it's pretty go. cool. So you guys are open uh, regular mall hours. So check them out, Academy of Wildlife Education at Merle Hay Mall. We're there. Perfect. Thank All you, right. man. Good Thanks. job. Appreciate it. See a snake and.